It's 20 Max for 2020. I'm Jason Snell here as always with Stephen Hackett, and we're here to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Macintosh. Yay! Happy 20, Macintosh! Oh, sorry, I was distracted here by my beautiful 20th anniversary Mac, rubbing it in this creepy way. Mm. Well, first off, it's not the 20th anniversary of the Macintosh now. It was also not the 20th mm. anniversary of the Macintosh when the 20th anniversary of the Macintosh... <laughs> was released <laughs> because it was released to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Apple's founding in 1976, but it was released in 1997. Which also wasn't the, yeah, it's a mess. And that's just the name. <laughs> that sentence sums up everything you need to know about mid nineties, Apple, just <laughs> that sentence. So this is, I would say maybe the weirdest Mac ever released. We could argue the Pippin or the Mac TV, look them up, people. But this one, my money, is the weirdest Mac. It was very expensive. It was a one-off kind of tech demo, basically like the kind of stuff that Apple was building as fanciful kind of like visions of the future of technology. And as the story goes, uh, Gil Emilio, the CEO of Apple at the time, saw it, thought it looked awesome, and ordered them to ship it. And everybody at Apple said, no, no, don't, no. But they had to. And so one of the things they did sort of desperate to make it interesting was add a Bose sound system to it, which is actually pretty good. My understanding is if you put a, a, a CD in the vertical CD drive uh, and play some music. Oh, look at the subwoofer, man. Yep. So this is this is actually the good part of this computer is that the sound system is pretty good. Bose did a pretty good job with it. Yeah, so you, you've got the speakers here. This is a sub and there's like power supply stuff in here. And there's a, this huge umbilical cable that goes between them. Uh, I bought this now almost five years ago when I turned 30 and it was like a present to myself. Yeah, it's the 30th old, anniversary and... of Stephen Macintosh. <laughs> That's right. And like to this day, I mean, I put a CD in it and played it like, to this day, this computer still sounds really good. I mean, Bose really did kill it uh, as far as the quality goes. But so much about this computer is is so, so weird. I mean, it kind of looks like a prototype iMac, right? You have the display. I mean, you know, everything is is built in except for this giant thing. You know, this this goes back and forth, and you, you have all of your I.O. in the back. It does kind of look like where the iMac would end up eventually, but... Because it was the anniversary Mac, the keyboard had like a leather palm rest. It had a trackpad in the keyboard that you could pop out and then put in a little leather piece if you prefer to use a mouse. It had a remote because this is, well, you mentioned the Macintosh TV. Actually, this sits next to one on my shelf. And uh, some of these Macs had TV tuner cards. Uh, this one basically has coax in on the back of it. And you had, so you had a TV remote. Now, the problem with this is a lot of these Macs uh, you couldn't use as a Mac and a TV at the same time. You kind of had a mode switch. But yeah, this is just a... I love it because it's so unique and because it is the peak of Weird Apple. Uh, you know, this was one of many things that was killed off when Jobs came back. In fact, there's uh, the, the keynote when this was introduced. It's the very last thing. And... Gil Amelia's on stage. The product manager, I guess, comes out and talks about it and like totally flubs it. And then they give one to Wozniak and Jobs. And I'm sure Jobs is like never took it home with him, right? He just like left it for the janitor to take home. I love the weirdness. I love that it's special. It's pretty rare. And no normal human should have ever bought this. Yeah, it, like, famously, it was not only, I mean, it was, it was ridiculously expensive, but they would deliver it to your house, like a white glove delivery mm -hmm. service would bring it to your house. They're just trying ways to make it make sense, and it, it still never made sense. It's not wrong, right? Like, I mean, as you said, it is Apple's internal design group trying to guess at what materials would be used in future computers, like a, the flat screen and more laptop materials. They're not wrong. There are a lot of modern Macs, even the iMac, that use what were considered laptop parts 
before, right? Like it was using laptop parts because they were smaller and more efficient to make more interesting desktop computers was the thing that they were investigating and they would continue to investigate. That's all fine. It's just that this is the kind of thing you do behind closed doors in a research lab or maybe leak it and boast about how you're, you know, have a vision of the future. But to ship it as a product is the part where it just crosses over into absurdity because it's not, I mean, it's not a product. It is a concept car that somehow a few thousand of them anyway, escaped into the wild because Gil Emilio said they had to. Yep, and I'm super glad he did. And I'm super glad it's on the list because this is a special match. It is, see? Now I, I'm, you're back with me on the list. That's good, that's good. That's right, I have one little, good again. little bit of trivia that I'll share, which is um, Gil Emilio, in his severance agreement with Apple, insisted and negotiated that as part of his severance, he would be provided a 20th anniversary Mac. I'm not kidding. Yep. Oh, Gil. Gil loved that thing. I hope I hope Gil has kept that in a position of... I, I'm sure he has. I bet he has. I bet he's proud of the 20th anniversary Mac. Yeah. That, I know I am of mine. It was a, you know, a big purchase, <laughs> but I'm so glad that it's here. It's very unusual. It's Jonathan Ive designed it, basically, and it is uh, weird, but... Better mm -hmm. things were ahead for Apple after the 20th anniversary of Mac, which, again, wasn't the 20th anniversary of the Mac. Didn't ship on the 20th anniversary of Apple. Says it all. Mid-90s Apple. What a concept. We'll be back next time with probably a less weird Mac than this. Right, Stephen? I mean, how could it not be? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to be uh, going towards simpler times. Normalcy. Next. Let's hear it for normalcy. But we'll be back next week. Until then, goodbye. Bye, Stephen. Bye.